The first thing I recommend you do in this problem is that you label, you write down everything on the transmission line here that you know. For example, Z0 is equal to 50 ohms, the VG is 15 volts, RG is 75, RL is 150, and capital T is 0.5 microseconds. Now we want to create a bounce diagram up to the second negative traveling current wave. So we know when the switch closes, we're going to get I1 plus traveling down the transmission line. When it reaches the load, we'll get I1 minus. When it reaches the generator, we'll get I2 plus. And then when it reaches the generator, uh, sorry, the load here, we're going to get I2 minus. So we want to get a bounce diagram that has all of these components on it, which means we are going to need to calculate some reflection coefficients. I'm going to start with the voltage reflection coefficient, and then we can quickly get the current reflection coefficient. This is RL minus Z0 over RL plus Z0. Plug in our numbers, we get 1 half. Then the reflection coefficient for the voltage at the generator is Rg minus Z0 over Rg plus Z0, which is 1 fifth. And then from this, we can get the current reflection coefficient at the load, and that is just take the voltage reflection coefficient and multiply by minus 1, so we get minus 1 half. And the reflection coefficient for the current at the generator multiply this by minus 1, so we get minus 1 fifth. Now in order to get I1 plus, we need to know what V1 plus is. And to get V1 plus, we need to know, we need to perform a voltage divider at the generator. So for this, we will get Vg Z0 over Rg plus Z0 plug in our numbers and we get 6 volts. From this we can get I1 plus, which is the same equation as for a resistor. We take V1 plus over the impedance of the transmission line, Z0, and we get 0.12 amps. Now to get I1 minus, we have I1 plus is incident on the load in order to create I1 minus. So for I1 minus, we are going to use the reflection coefficient for the current at the load and multiply that times I1 plus, the wave that's incident on the load. So we plug in and we will get minus 0.06 amps. For I2 plus, we have I1 minus is incident on the generator side. That's what's creating I2 plus. So to get I2 plus, we will take the current reflection coefficient at the generator and multiply it times I1 minus and we get 0.012 amps. And then lastly, I2 plus is incident on the load to get I2 minus. So for I2 minus, the ref oh that's an I, this should be a reflection coefficient. The reflection coefficient at for the current at the load times I2 plus is minus 0.006 amps. Okay, so now let's put all this into our bounce diagram. For our bounce diagram, let's say this is z equals 0 and this is z equal L. When the switch closes at time t equals 0, we're going to get I1 plus, which is 0.12 amps. And it reaches the load at capital T seconds, which is 0.5 microseconds. Then we can go back, we get I1 minus, which we can label as being minus 0.06 amps. I2 plus is 0.012 amps and I2 minus is minus 0.006 amps. This reaches, I1 minus reaches the generator at one microsecond. 
this is at 1.5 microseconds. Now, also as part of this question, we're asking you to label the current amplitudes at the generator and at the load over the time. So at the generator, we see over this time span, we only have I1+. plus. We don't have any other currents at the generator. So over this time span, we're going to have 0.12 amps. At the moment it reaches, I1 minus reaches the generator. Over this time span, until I2 minus reaches the generator, we're going to have I1 plus, because the switch is still closed, I1 minus, and also I2 plus. All these together is 0.72 amps. Then on the other side, here, we get zero amps because nothing has reached the load yet. And in this time span, we will have I1 plus plus I1 minus, and that is equal to 0.06 amps. And we could also label this until we get another reflection. This would be I1 plus plus I1 minus plus I2 plus plus I2 minus, and that should equal 0.066 amps.